All right. Well, I'm going to try this. And okay, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to. Wow, this is so bright. And I don't know why. Hmm. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Huh. 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 Hi, guys. Nice to see everybody. Um, all right. Well, I can't see bigger. The white screen is making me look really bright. So that's all right. Um, hey, everybody. I'm just going to wait a few minutes here before uh, we get going. I guess I don't have to see myself. Uh, I'm going to move a couple things over here. Bear with me. No pun intended. Uh, okay. Everybody see me okay? I haven't used this in a long time. I know Sean was using it the other day. Hi, Tracy. I'll wait till everybody gets comfortable here. I'm sorry I am so bright on this. Um, not sure what's going on with that, but I better put my glasses on too so I can see. Yay! Newfoundland, 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 Canada. Hi, how are you, Tammy? Good to see you. And Joanne Garnett and Craig Bailey. Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit and while we're waiting for some people, and then I'm going to start to do some reads for y'all. And actually, I think what I'll do is I will, and it's really fitting too, because today is the seventh and seventh is a sacred number. So hi, Janet Butterworth. How are you? I am actually going to shuffle as I'm shuffling the deck right now. Um, before we get started with anything here, and I'll pull a card for all of us, for everybody around the world. Hi, Lucy. How you doing? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the card that's coming up today in the seventh position for everybody, that's anybody that's listening, so it's kind of for the world, is the Komodo Dragon. Okay, very fitting card. The Komodo dragon represents change, being thrown into change, and how at times it becomes very overwhelming and um, kind of anxiety filled. Okay, so that's a very fitting card for the world today. I tell you, these cards never lie to me. Um, and the Komodo dragon tells you just to kind of take that deep breath that we all need to do. And the change will be different, something we haven't experienced before. When it becomes to balance, it starts to balance out again. So that's telling everybody to be patient, be calm, take things slowly, take a deep breath. It'll be okay. But change always is difficult for people when we're used to having things one way or another. So for everybody out there, just remember we're walking into a new, what's going to be a new normal when all this is done, okay? So that's the Komodo dragon, and it's very fitting that it comes up in the seventh space. So again, I love my cards. My cards um, I designed with spirit. Um, took me hmm, quite a few years. It took me like four or five years to get them completed, get the artwork done, get them all in. And then they grew after the first deck because the first deck didn't ha the first deck only had 50 cards. The second deck now has 72 cards in it. So um, I trust them because spirit brought them for me. Hi, Carolyn, uh, Elaine, and Norma. 
Um, hopefully everybody is doing well. I'm doing okay. I'm up here in the woods on a lake, so I'm fine. My kids are two hours south of me. They're kind of in the heart of Metro Detroit area, so their areas are getting hit pretty good with the virus, but they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and that's stay home and stay safe and healthy which I hope everybody here is doing, because I know it's a very trying time right now that we're all facing. But it's also kind of, a, if you look at it on a flip side, um, the good thing about it, well, at least in most cases, is we're getting to know each other in our family units uh, in a different way than we're not used to. Um, you know, normally we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off or kids are going one way. And when they get home, they have their, you know, face in their phones and just like the adults do. And we're run, 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 run. And everybody's tired. Well, now everybody's had to take a beat. And even for those that are working from home, you know, um, you got people up on you. So uh, you have to kind of take time and remember what it's like to be human with each other again. And I think in many ways, family values are being brought back. And I think that's a good thing. Not to mention, um, again, and I'm not supportive of the virus at all, but a good thing coming out of it is um, the creatures in the earth are kind of mending a little bit. You know, you're seeing uh, dolphins in the canals in Venice. You're seeing the whales swim in more areas. You're seeing, seeing uh, you know, I think I saw, uh, it was over in Ireland that they had the goats come down from the hills and they were in the streets. So it's like the role reversal of now um, the animals are out of their cages and the people are in their cages, so to speak. So, but things are healing and that's a good thing. So, um, all right, so I think that's good. I think we've got a few people here, and I'm going to go up and scroll up on this, and, and pardon me because it's really bright in the house here. Um, and I'm going to, hi from Florida. Hi, Susan. Uh, welcome. And, yeah, I'll pull a card for Paul for sure. Um, I'm going to start with Lucy Wiltshire. I'll pull you a card. We're going to do some card readings today. Again, I'll pull a card and give you the interpretation that Spirit's giving to me for you. And um, um, after that, before we end, I'm going to do a prayer for everybody. And if everybody could stick around and join for that, I would appreciate the energy put into the prayer that we put up. Okay, so Lucy, you go first. And it's one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. The card for you today, and this is going to be really interesting. Uh, I think today the reads are going to be some interesting cards coming up. Lucy, the card for you today is sweet grass. Okay. Sweet grass within the native culture is a blessing. Um, it's used in ceremony. Um, I don't know if you've ever smelled sweet grass, but it's got this amazing aroma that has healing properties. It also brings about calm and peace. Okay, so here you go, if you can see it. Okay, uh, there you go. It's sweet grass, sweet grass braids. Okay, so all right, what I'm what I'm being told for you today, okay, is. Much of similar to the card I just pulled um, for everybody with the Komodo dragon. This is about blessings. This is about remembering even the small blessings that you have in your life. And make sure that you are able to put out positives to people around you and um, in your family unit, in your circle, or what I call your sacred hoop. Um, or your life circle. That's your family and friends that are closest to you. Okay, find new ways to share those blessings. Um, I'm also being told that you need to focus more on the positives than the negatives. Um, that's something all of us are struggling with right now, but I'm being shown that you have okay, that you've been kind of in a point of like, what they're saying is like 
it hasn't been a level scale for you. So in other words, you know, things like good and bad, like what we consider to be good and bad in our lives, it's been more of a difficult path for you for a while. And I'm feeling that the blessing side will go up so that you're going to have more blessings um, being given to you. But you first have to acknowledge the blessings that you do have in your life, because some of them I feel that um, kind of aren't being recognized for what they truly are. So even the small things, sometimes we need to look at things in a different manner, okay? So what this is being told is uh, with the sweet grass, okay, is, and this is a big blessing for you, um, is to kind of clean out the closet, get rid of the old stuff that doesn't serve you anymore, and um, lay it to rest. Pulling it forward with you is not going to serve any purpose, okay? And then, like, cleanse your area. So cleanse your thoughts, your thought process, um, cleanse the cycles that you've been in, um, we have the power to do that, and only you have that power to do that in your own life, okay? And that's what I'm being told really loud for you today. And if you do that, you're going to have many more blessings come to you. But focus on the good stuff, not the negative stuff, okay? And that's what I've got for you today, Lucy, and I hope that helps, okay? All right, uh, Paul, I will pull a card from you for you. Okay. We did have sun earlier today. It actually got up to 48 degrees here at the lake. I was really excited. I thought, yay, I am almost going to be able to wear shorts outside. Yay. And no, that kind of went away pretty quick. And we're back down to 42 and rain. But that's okay. Rain's good. We need rain. And everybody, don't forget tonight is the full moon. Um, so anybody that has crystals or likes things charged up um, for the new cycle that we're going to be going into, make sure you get them out into uh, the outside or set them in a window so you get your crystals recharged and cleansed. Tonight is the night because it's going to be a big full pink moon. One two, three, four, five, six, and seven for Paul. <laughs> okay, well, Mr. Paul, guess what your card is? It's the owl, okay? What I'm being told really loud for you today, Paul, with the owl coming in is you have to rely on your own um, kind of life lessons that you've had to this point. Um, the wisdoms that you've gathered and depend on that. Don't change your thought process. Continue to move forward with how you know things are right, how things should be for you. Um, don't let outside influences uh, change your direction or your mind at this point with stuff. Um, I'm also feeling that, um, hmm, okay, um, what I'm being told too for you right now is because we're like all in this downtime, right now would be a really opportune time for you to gain more knowledge through some old books. And they're actually showing me like out of print books, like prints that you can't go on, books that you can't go on that are, are not in print anymore on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or any any website. It's kind of books that you need to either dust off and reread, um, but it's to kind of shore up the knowledge base that you already have, okay? And it's really, really loud that you are going to be like looked to for and they're saying like the pace things go at. Um, okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so like the pace. So people will look to you kind of as, okay, and Sean doesn't need to be laughing at this because I can hear him in the background, but you need to be looked at and people will be looking at you to kind of um, 
feel safe, to feel stable, to feel like um, you're leading. So leading by example is really important for those people that are around you right now, whether it's social media or friends and family that are tight around you right now, you're going to be the one they're going to look to to lead by example. But you also need to shore up again that knowledge base. And um, they're showing me two books in particular. One's pretty good size. The other one is kind of a little bit smaller and doesn't have as many pages, but they're old books. And I don't see like them as paperback. I actually see them as hardbound books. So um, yeah, dust off your library, brother. I think you need to um, refresh your wisdoms. Okay. So that's your card for today. All right. Hopefully that helped you a little bit today, Paul, or you can get some insight to it or whatever. All right. Okay. I got to put my glasses down again. All right. Let's see. I did Paul. I did Lucy. Um, uh, okay. Joanne Garnett. Hi, Joanne. Uh, let me pull a card for you. All right. Okay. Shuffle them up a little bit. All right. Joanne Garnet. Garnet is my birthstone. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Well, good card for you too. Today's card for you, Joanne Garnet, is the turtle. Okay. Now, the turtle is all about the earth. The turtle is all about grounding. Okay. So what I'm, okay. Yep. Okay. All right. What I keep seeing is like, you don't know what direction you're going in right now. Um, it's like, should I do this or should I do that? Or well, maybe I should do that or well, wait a minute. So they're showing like, you're kind of overwhelming and exhausting your own thought process on which direction you need to take right now at this moment. And again, like I said, a lot of this is influenced by the outside world of what's going on uh, around the world with everybody right now. But it's like almost exhausting for you. Okay. And I don't know whether this is because of the job you hold or the job you're doing. But you need to learn to ground. Okay. Now the turtles, oops, got to put it up right. Would help, wouldn't it? There you go. The turtles, okay, are all about the Mother Earth. So, you know, even if you have five minutes to go outside and sit and plant your feet on the ground and just breathe in air, okay, just breathe in some fresh air. I'm being told really loud, just ground yourself so that, um, that kind of, and I, I don't want to really say it's confusion. I just feel like your thoughts are so scattered. They're, they're just, it's again, I feel this real big overwhelming uh, feeling with stuff. And if you ground yourself, you'll be able to see clearly. You'll be able to understand things better and you won't be so scattered with everything. You won't be so panicked with everything. Um, you'll have a clearer idea of what your plan should be or how you should move through the next, the next few days. Okay. And it's, I'm hearing like the next three or four days. So just remember to feed your own soul and take care of yourself. And, you know, if you're tired, you know, take a, take a breath, take a beat. And if you can step outside, you know, sit on the side porch or the front porch or sit in a chair outside and get some, some fresh air in you, even if it's for five minutes, just to clear your thought process. So that's what this card is telling you right now. It is to ground, ground yourself and, and let the thoughts that are kind of taking you every which way, but loose to slow down. Okay. All right. I hope that helped you a little bit, Miss Joanne. 
All right, let's see who we have next here. Okay. Oh, I like this because this one doesn't run. I like this shine. And Bax, this is good because they kind of stay where they need to, eh? All right, let's do this one for Elaine Simpson. Hi, Elaine. Let's see if I can get a card for you here. Okay, I don't need my glasses to see what Spirit's saying, so let's get the seventh card for you. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. You have the eagle, okay? The eagle is one of the most majestic animals here in the United States and within um, the Native American community. With the eagle, it is said that the eagle can take our prayers upon its wings to be the closest to God creator. So what I'm being told right now for you is this is about feeding your spiritual side, feeling, feeding that sacred side. Um, when doubt comes up and faith wavers and people around you, I'm feeling, are kind of turning to you a little bit for guidance, you need to remember that everything you put out to the universe is heard. Um, it comes back to us when we're least suspecting the help and the guidance comes to us. We just simply have to be open to it, okay? So don't think what you're putting up and what you're asking the universe to provide or God creator to provide or whoever it is that you put your desires and wishes up to, whether it's prayer or um, your thought process, know that it's all heard and answered. It might not always come back, and I'm being told really loud to tell you this, it might not always come back in ways that we expect, um, but it always comes back in a way to benefit us in positives, okay? And it comes back to us when it's most needed, even though as humans, and I can tell you for fact, because I've walked that path, that when it comes back, you're thinking it's going to come back in one way and it comes back in this other way. And the other way is better. Okay. The other way is more beneficial for everything. So I'm being told really loud, continue to feed your spiritual, continue to trust that your prayers, your wants, your needs, your desires are being put up and the universe will respond in kind um, don't doubt that, um, we're all being heard. It's just that the plan isn't always as clear as we need it to be at times, but don't lose faith in that. Okay. So that's what I'm being told, um, for you today, Miss Elaine and, um, stay strong. Um, the struggles that you're facing right now and the issues that you're facing right now, You'll come through them. Just don't lose faith, okay? All right. Hopefully, Elaine, that gives you a little bit of clearness, all right? Okay. Now, let's see who's next. Miss Janet Butterworth, you're next. Okay. All right. Norma, I'm doing okay. I am doing okay. Okay. Let's see. Miss Janet Butterworth, one. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Ooh. Miss Janet, you have an elemental card tonight. You have the card fire, okay? Fire. So in other words, you need to ignite the things that you are looking for, the answers that you're looking for, the things you're seeking response for, you need to ignite it. In other words, you need to put it into practice. A lot of times when we put, I and mean, I'm going to explain to you as they're telling me, a lot of times that we're 
um, faced with things that we want, we need, you know, um, we desire, you know, we pray for what have you. And we ask and we ask and we ask and we ask and we ask. And the universe is trying to respond to us, but we can't just sit there and not do anything. So what I'm being told is you need to be proactive in lighting a fire under some of the things that you're looking for to happen. Okay. In other words, asking for it and praying for it is not always the only thing that we have to do. We have to move forward in other ways to get things to happen. And I'm being told really loud that it's like put a fire under yourself because you have the ability to get things done, to make things happen that you need to happen. You just have to want it bad enough to start the process. And that's what I'm being told really loud for you. So I hope that helps a little bit, Janet. And I'm being told also really loud, don't doubt your abilities because the abilities you have um, are there and the skills you have that you think you don't have, you're not putting enough into the positive side of things that you can do this. You've got this. And that's what they keep saying. You've got this. Okay. So hopefully Janet, that kind of helps you a little bit and confirms a few things for you. Okay. Okay. Now let me scroll down a little bit more here. Oops. I lost it again. Hi, Miss Palmer. How are you? Okay, Lisa Coran. I hope that's correct. I will shuffle and give you a card. Okay, Lisa Coran. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, Lisa, the card that you have. This is one of my favorites, and I actually wish I could have a pond here to keep them in, but your card is the koi, okay? Now, this is referring to, when the koi comes up, it's referring to the ancestors, okay, our ancestors. Um, and koi can live many years as creatures themselves, but they also represent the souls of our ancestors. And... What I'm being told, and I'm really being told really loud right now, is a grandmother. <sighs> okay, I'm having a grandmother step forward for you right now. And I'm being told that you need to, um, okay, the words are I'm getting are embrace your destiny, embrace your gifts, embrace who you are. And know that who you are is just as important as the next person. Um, this grandmother is also sending you a lot of love. Um, okay, yep, yep. Okay, yep. All right, yep, yep. Okay, so many times when we're here and we're walking the human, we feel that nobody else has ever gone through anything like we're going through, okay, in our lives. And that's true to a point because no one is like us and each person is individual and different. However, what I'm being told right now for you is you need to look at the past, look at your ancestors, look at your family tree, and realize that every one of them that came before you has made life a little bit better by living their lives to get all of us to where we need to be right now. So what I'm being told is you need to look at some of the lessons that they taught their family members, okay, through their lifetime and pass down to generations, okay, as life lessons on what to do and what not to do. You know, whether the lessons are good, bad, or indifferent, we learn from them, 
Okay, so I'm being told really loud that there's a lot of love around you right now. And I'm actually seeing a daisy, like the flower, and they don't usually show me daisies, but I'm being shown a daisy right now. And with this card, I'm being shown like the hands are coming with me in the lotus flower and the pond with the koi, which is good luck and prosperity. So this is being shown to you and given to you right now and peace. I'm being told a lot of peace, peace of heart. So please take the time you need to feed your soul, but listen to the ancestors because I'm told they are sharing things with you, but you're not hearing them because you're missing it. You're missing the messages, whether it's in sleep time or little things that are being left around for you to be able to see, physically see, and you're kind of like, not realizing they're actually messages from the ancestors. So that's what I'm getting for you, Lisa. I hope that kind of resonates for you and helps you a little bit. Um, take a deep breath and, and, and just open yourself to possibilities of being able to hear again, whether it's in dream time or actual things around. But I'm also, again, they're showing me this daisy. For whatever reason, the daisy's important. So I don't know what that is. Not my message. So for you, Lisa, the daisy that this uh, grandmother is stepping forward and handing to you. Okay. And it's all given with love. So um, surround that around you and keep that in your space. Okay. Hopefully that helped you a little bit. All right. Okay. I said hi to Miss Palmer. Hi, Miss Tammy. All right. Uh, okay, I got to put my glasses on for this because the letters are running together a little bit. R N R Judy. Okay, I'm going to pull a card for R N R Judy. Okay, let's see what we can get here. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Ooh. See, I knew this was going to be. All right. Miss Judy, your card is the winged ones. Okay. And the winged ones include all of the birds that are in nature, all the lessons that they have, and the winged ones fly, like I said, close to Creator God's face, and they put messages out to the universe, and it's a huge blessing when the winged ones, and the winged ones are also angels, uh, if you believe in angels, which I definitely do, and I could tell you stories about that another time. Um, but the winged ones keep you safe and they keep your, hmm. the winged ones have an energy like no other energy and they are true blessings, although they can also be true pains in the butt to you because they remind us of our humanness and our human failings are part of the process of the life that we are here to live, the path that we are here to walk. and. The winged ones take all our desires and our wants and our prayers and everything to the universe. And it can even be negatives that we are trying to get rid of. And they take them to the universe and they filter it up. And when it comes back to us, it comes back to us in positives. Um, so the winged ones are bringing you a huge blessing. Um, they want you to know that you're very protected um that you're very loved and i'm i'm getting a sense that there's like something you're waiting for whether it's a message or something from the other side that you are waiting for a response to that you put out or put up or or thought about and i'm being told patience and open your 
ears, open your heart and your mind to listening, and that response will come to you when you least suspect it, okay? Um, again, the card was the winged ones. It's a huge blessing card, and um, that's for you. So, Judy, I hope that kind of gives you a response. Now, I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and see who else is here. Yeah, it was, Craig. It was in Wales. You're right. The goats. I knew it was somewhere in the UK somewhere. Okay, Margaret, I will. Hi, David from Manchester. All right. Um, Norma, I don't think I gave a, re a read for you. Hi, MJ. Okay. Um, Norma Charlton. I will pull a card for you. Um, love to, uh, if Bex is listening out there, Bex, if I can figure this out, I'd love for you to come on here with me for a couple minutes and yak about this because I know you have a gift as well, even though you don't want to admit it. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven. I just got to figure out how to do it. All right. Norma. Now, you're going to get a kick out of this card, Norma. Hang on. I got a drink. You're going to get a kick out of this card. And here's my mug. My favorite mug, of course, the Ghost Dimension, right? Make sure you guys check out all their... Uh, shows over on Amazon. They got a bunch up on YouTube. That's Ghost Dimension. And I think it's on Pluto TV as well. So make sure you check the gang out because they're awesome and their investigations are done in a proper manner. Besides, it's really fun watching when other people get the bejesus scared out of them. Okay. And it's not me getting scared. All right. Norma, your card is the opossum. One of my favorite creatures ever. I'll tell you a quick story about it. When my pup was still alive, he went outside and my cats were outside and I went to get them in for the night and I didn't have my glasses on. The hallway was dark and I opened the door and in walked the cats, in walked the dog. And I thought, oh, is this another cat? And I flipped the light on and it was the opossum. And they are great creatures to have around. They are actually get a very bad rap. They're very healthy animals. They eat bugs. They eat ticks. They eat things that humans don't want around them. So they're actually really good. They're very clean. They only live two, three years. They don't have a long lifespan. But, oh, my gosh, they are so awesome. So what I'm being told right now for you, Miss Norma, is tap into all the good things that you have um, going on in your life for you right now and push all that good stuff forward. Um, don't roll over uh, and play dead for an issue that's going on because there's something that you don't want to deal with Oh, that I'm like, I keep seeing you keep putting on the back burner. Um, and they're saying, don't put it on the back burner because it isn't going to matter when you deal with it. You might as well deal with it and get it over with, and then it'll be gone and done with, okay? Um, so you have the persistence with life and how you approach life. You have the persistence of the possum. You know how to get things done. You know how to survive through things. You know how to push through obstacles. And you take it, you need to take it right now, step by step. And I don't know if you've ever watched a possum, but when somebody comes near them, they walk really, really slow. They're very... Uh, poor eyesight, so they depend on their other senses, and that's what I'm being told for you. Look at the bigger picture. Uh, pay more attention to um, um, the other senses so that you can understand exactly what's going on before you make a decision. And that's your card, Miss Norma. 
Uh, the possum. Cool card. Cool card. Cool animal. All right. Let me uh, scroll down a little bit here. All right. Craig, yeah, I'll get to you in a sec. Okay. I will get to you in a sec. All right. Uh, okay. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad, Judy. I'm glad it worked. All right. Uh, let me try Craig, and then I'll give... Annie a read, okay? Hi, MJ. I hope things are going well for you, ma'am. All righty. Let's see if I can do something here really quick. Okay, guys, hang tight. I got to do something here. One second. One second. Be patient. I got the cards. Hang on. Uh, I got to send Bexa. Bexa thing here. See if I can get her to come in for a second. And I'll send that over to her while I'm doing. All right, let me get this card. Okay, this one is for Craig. Um, David, the reason I, uh, the question is why do I flip seven cards? Seven goes for the seven directions. It's a sacred, sacred number. Um, there are Seven directions are uh, north, south, east, west, above, below, and within. Um, we have the seven grandfather teachings. It was how I was taught. Many cultures have seven as, uh, hi, Tammy, um, as uh, sacred. So, yeah, so I'm all for that. And um, um, seven sacred number it's a sacred number for me so that's why i do seven if i'm doing private readings that's not how i do things and, and i don't always use cards when i do private readings david but this just makes it simpler when i'm doing uh readings this way um so uh it still gets to the heart of things and spirit still talks to me through whatever is given to you plus i get whatever else they share with me so it's just a sacred number that i grew up with being taught by my elders one two three four five six and seven. Oh, here's another good card craig this is a really cool card um let me make sure I got it the right way. Ah, it's the honeybee. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. The honeybee. Okay. And the honeybee is very um, productive, as we all know. Um, they're always busy. They're always working. And um, what I'm being shown for you today with the honeybee is you need to Collect all the information before voicing opinion. Um, collect it from proper sources. Collect it from, not from hearsay. I'm being told, make sure you get it right, whatever that means for you. And um, the honeybee, and I'm being told also to okay the work that you put in um to whatever this is whether it's an issue um if it's a work thing or it's just a life thing the work you put into it you will get back out of it um in a positive manner in a positive way so the results will be good 
but you have to do your homework first. And I'm being told that really loud. You need to do your homework first. No shortcuts. Um, and just know all the hard work that you put into whatever this is, the solution, whether you're looking for an answer for something, whatever it is, they're telling me, make sure you stick to the program of getting the, and it's the source I'm being told because they're showing me like as the honeybee goes to flowers to get the nectar, they go to, they prefer certain flowers. So I'm being told you got to make sure where your source, that your source is solid, that your source is um, oh, they're saying it and it's like so fast, it's so rapid, right? Like your source is and the word isn't solid that they're using, but it's like, it's a good source. It's a reputable source is what I'm being told. So make sure you get all that information before you put your own opinion out. Um, so I'm not really sure what that's referring to, because again, the message isn't for me, it's for you. So again, the card um, for you, Craig, today is the honeybee. Okay, so hopefully that um, helps you a little bit. Now I did say... I would give Annie a card, Annie Gertrude, okay? And then, um, Tammy, I'll pull one for you, okay? All right, let me see down here. Um, -dum -dum. Okay, Annie, you first. Bees are one of my favorite, people are always afraid of bees, and I'm actually allergic to bees, the bee stings, but bees really don't sting you unless you're doing something dumb to them. Um, uh, I've only had them sting me when I was in my teens and it was an accident because I ran over them um, a piece of their hive that I didn't know was near the ground and I ran over it with the weed whacker. So naturally they were protecting their hive and they came running out at me, but um, I have never been stung by one sense and I think they're very good for the earth. They need to be here. Otherwise so much doesn't get done. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Ooh. All right, Annie. You got a big card today. Your card, ooh, my hair's in my head now. A big card today, and I'm doing it all over the place, aren't I? Here we go. Find it. It's the moose, okay? And let me back it up. There you go. Now right, you can see it. All right, the moose, okay? Now, the moose is talking to you and bringing the energy to you as protector, okay? Um, moose is something you don't want to mess with. Okay. So what I'm being told right now is you kind of have to step up, uh, to put that protective gear around you and call for that moose energy. Um, being that it's springtime, um, it usually refers to family members, young ones, um, people around you that you are kind of protective of or need to be protective of, but that's what's coming through for you today with the moose. Um, the moose is kind of a solitary animal, and right now I'm being told that um, you need to be less solitary with some of the things that are going on in your life. You need to talk to some other people about it, um, and this is about protecting self. This is about um, keeping that barrier around you. So you're actually letting people in to help you do that. Um, and by letting them in, you'll be stronger as well. So whatever's going on, Okay, I'm also feeling, okay, now this is a little bit flip side to that. Okay, the moose is, like I said, solitary, strong animal. But I'm also feeling that you're um, feeling a little vulnerable with certain things in your life. And that's why this moose energy is coming around you to protect you. But with that vulnerability, you need to let some people in that are close to you so that they can assist you. And this is really loud. 
So bring that energy in to help you, strengthen you, shore you up. But it's also strong in letting somebody assist you and help you. It takes a lot of guts to do that, okay? It takes a lot of guts to stand up and say, I need someone to listen to me. I need someone to help me. I need someone to be there for me. I need someone there just to give me a hug. I know it takes a lot to do it because I've had to do it in my lifetime. And it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life because I'm always the one that stands up and does that for others. And when I came to a point where I needed it for me, it was a very hard lesson to learn. Okay. So what I'm being told is, yeah, you're a tough nut. You're a um, very strong person when you need to be, but you don't like other people knowing when you're not as strong as you should be, or at least how you should be in your own eyes. Okay. So now it's about being that moose, allowing that moose energy to come into you to strengthen yourself up to be able to ask others within your circle for what you need. Again, whether it's to listen, whether it's to be part of something, whether it's to just have a hug, or right now it's an elbow bump, right? That's what they're doing right now. Um, but you need to let that moose energy come in and know that spirit is around you. Spirit is listening to your needs, your wants, um, what's going on with you. You're not alone, but you need to um, kind of let that sink in and be able to feed your soul and feed the energy that you have, okay, um, so that you can stay in balance. And wow, you've got some super strong, strong energy. So I hope that um, helps a little bit for you. Um, it's a wow, really super strong, super, super strong. Okay, let's see who else we have here. All right, Janice King. Well, MJ, I'm really glad that. Um, you're doing well. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, next time, Bex, that's a way to weasel out. Next time, charge your phone. I get it. She's like, I don't have my phone. It's only on 2%. <laughs> that's okay. Hang me out to dry. No problem. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So I am going to pull a card for Janice King. One, two, three, four. Five, six, sing it, Pip. I hear you in the back. My little love bird is just singing away in the back. Okay, Janice King, you have the beaver. Okay, all right. This is a great creature as well. They have so much to teach you. I had um, a pair of beavers out in front of my house three springs ago and it was really strange because usually when you think of beaver they dam up streams and rivers this one was in front in my lake and it built this huge dam out in front of my seawall and i had called the dnr out to check it out because there were some people trying to trap them and i i didn't want them on my property trapping and they came out and they said i can't believe it but you're right they're beaver and to watch these pair go out and build this huge nest and they come on your property and they take trees down, but they take the trees down that are already dead. So in other words, trees that were standing, they cut them down and they use them and then they clean and they pack with their tail and then when they had their babies they take care of their babies so what i'm being told for you right now janice is this is a time of both like spring cleaning and rebuilding okay um being told really loud that all your hard work that you're putting into your life right now and into 
Uh, I'm feeling that it's almost like something new or it's kind of like a side shoot of something that you've been working on. But all this hard work that you're putting into and you've been putting into, you keep saying, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Well, it will happen. You've got, and I'm being shown like two, three. So like, yeah, normally when I see numbers, it's usually months. So I'm saying two to three months. So you have maybe two to three more months of work to put into this. Um, but I'm also, it's almost like just shoring up the work you've already done. Um, and if you continue to do this, the, okay, what are we, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's going to be like slowly trickling in um, little tidbits of, of like what you're waiting for. So in other words, like the payload. Like, oh, yeah, this is complete. It's done. Yay. And you kind of launch it and whatever this is that you're looking for to happen, the payload will be coming in. This and it, and I want to say it's almost like it's a relationship. Um, but it's like, you know, you're working on it. You're working on it. You're working towards it. Um, and just keep working on it the way you're doing. Don't get discouraged. Um, okay. Yep. Okay, part of what I'm being told is this should have happened a while back, but it's almost like you gave up on it and you kind of changed course a little bit and then you kind of went back to it. So it's kind of like, okay, and spirit laughs at this because it's like, okay, we put a plan in motion, right? And in our head, we put a timetable, but that's not necessarily how things work. You know, just because we want something in a certain amount of time doesn't mean it happens in a certain amount of time. So it's like anything, you have to build it, right? So you put something out to the universe, and I'm being told, manifest it, manifest it, manifest it, and this is what you've been trying to do. Okay, so you're, you're manifesting, you're putting stuff out to the universe, and they're telling you, okay, and spirit hears you, and your ancestors hear you, and the universe hears you, and okay, they're starting to line stuff up, okay? So the stuff that you want to manifest is going to manifest, all right? Then all of a sudden because it's not happening in the time that we want it to, we go, whoa, we're tired of this. It's not working. No one's listening to us. So we change direction. So meantime, spirit, our ancestors, the universe are like, whoa, wait a minute. What just happened? We're almost like complete to the end here. What's going on? Oh, well, they just changed direction. So they have to go back to the beginning. So what I'm being told is continue the course, stay the course, have a little faith, have a little patience, and your payload will happen. It'll get there, okay? It'll be there. Um, you just have to be a little more patient. A little more work, not much, a little more work, and it'll get there, okay? All right. Let me see what else we got here. Hi, Cheryl. Um, you're welcome, Craig. Oh, let's see. Sean, tell your mom, and I heard, uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, let's see what else. <laughs> Craig, see, Spirit is telling you something, Craig. You need to listen to your guides, okay? Open up. We all have the ability, okay? We all have the ability to tap into Spirit, to tap into um our ancestors um, that have passed before us or have walked with us and since passed, we all have the ability to tap into it. It's whether we want to or not. And one of the things, and this was brought up the other day with uh, to Sean and Paul, they were asking about spirits. Can spirits be bad? You know, of course, spirits can be bad. Um, but my rule of thumb is usually normal. Normally, if a person was kind of mean-spirited or nasty in life, a lot of times they can, if they're stuck, they're still nasty and mean in, in the afterlife. They don't always have to be nice. They're usually the same person 
they were here as they walked the human because they really didn't learn the lessons they were supposed to while they walked the human. So I always tell people that's a rule of thumb. The other thing is people shouldn't be as scared of spirit um, because we can tell them to stop. We can tell them to not enter where we're at. Like Paul says, he doesn't like stuff in his own home. With me, I have to clear my space after I do readings like this. I sage and uh, sweet grass and la with lavender and tobacco in my house. I cleanse my house because I don't want those energies to stay here. However, I'll get, because I do do readings, I'll have people come to me uh, in my downtime if I don't have my guard up and my doors, so-called spiritual doors locked. I have people knocking on my door ahead of time all the time if they know somebody I'm going to be doing a reading for and they're excited about it because it's like they know we can hear them and see them so they kind of jump the gun but they never mean if you need them to go away you just tell them you're not allowed in and if they get too boisterous I do sage I you know I people do candles you know some people do holy water whatever it is they're not allowed in your space you have to give them that permission so I always tell people that, and they need to make sure that they do that, okay? All right, let me see if I can do one more read here. Oh, la, 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 la. All right, Robin Anderson. Let's see if I can get to you. Okay, Robin Anderson. I don't think I read Robin Anderson. One, two, three four, five, six, and seven. All right. Robin, you have the coho salmon. One of my favorite fish. They're all my favorite. What should I say? The coho salmon, okay? All right. The salmon are all about rebirth and renewal, okay? So Robin, what I'm being told for you right now, this is a kind of a downtime for a lot of people, but this is like time for you to kind of renew your soul. And I'm not just getting spiritual, I'm getting renew your soul. You need to take that time that's being given to you right now and feed everything so it brings about balance and you kind of feel better about yourself and you have a healthier outlook because right now I feel like there's a lot of areas that are like you've kind of been like patching with band-aids so to speak like you haven't really taken time for this that or the other thing you know whether it's a physical your physical health or your physical well-being whether it's your mental health whether it's your spiritual health like you may do one one time and then forget about the rest of it and then oh yeah maybe i should do this this, this. this is about taking this time right now and feeding everything this is about a renewal of your soul okay um and this is a very positive thing um I also feel that you are very connected and I feel that you have guides um, or your ancestors are around you that want to help you and bring you to that place of renewal. And I think that if you allow yourself and take this time that the salmon are asking you to take right now, you will feel much better in the long run because you did this and i feel so badly that it's kind of like the batteries have run dry and you need to recharge yourself so you need to take the time for yourself to be able to do that okay uh very very important that you do it uh in order to be kind of refreshed when you move forward uh in the months ahead so that you'll have a different outlook, almost a healthier outlook, um, because you feel more energized, okay? But energized in a balanced way, okay? I hope that helps you a little bit, Robin. Okay, so what I would like to do right now, um, 
is I would like to do prayer if that's okay with everybody. And if it's not, well, you don't have to stay, but I'm going to do it anyway here. And I'm going to read a prayer for everybody. And um, I just want everybody to kind of join in uh, quietly with me and just kind of raise the energy up. And we're going to try to raise some energy up for everybody here today. Okay. I call to the sacred winds to carry my words to the grandmothers and grandfathers of the north, the south, the east, the west, above, below, and within. I call to the sacred winds to carry my words to the winged ones, the four legged the plant people, the crystal keepers, the thunder beings, the angelic realm, to Mother Mary Magdalene, and to my brother Christ, and to all the nations that love us. I thank you for all the many blessings that you have shared with us today and beyond. And I ask that you hear our prayers, whether spoken or held silently within our hearts. Today, I ask that you hear my prayers as I stand humbly before you, small and human. Help us to remember we are all but a tiny part of a great universe and that we are all connected as one. Bring us the strength we need to walk our paths without ego, without judgment. Allow our hearts to hear what our ears are missing. Teach us how to allow forgiveness for others and for ourselves. Fill our being with the unconditional love that you so freely offer all. And I call that we are reminded we are all no better than or less than one another. Guide us through our days to help us with our humanness that we learn to reconnect with others in gentle and positive ways, offering smiles when they are needed without thought, shoulders or ears to help ease another, and words that will uplift and soothe. Keep our children safe and strong in this troubled world. And I ask that on this day and in days to come, guidance is shared with us all to help us as we walk our paths. Help open our eyes so we are able to learn and see the right way of things. Teach us to respect all life, no matter how small is sacred. Open our hearts so that when the harshness of the world falls to our, it makes us fall at our feet, we are able to cope and handle it with compassion and understanding. And I ask that today and all days ahead that we honor all connections as sacred, that calm and peacefulness is wrapped around each and every one of us in this trying time, that we get to know our family and our friends better, that we find patience and understanding with each other, and we learn to be kinder and gentler and connect on a more positive human level. It will bring us all back to the human that lies deep within our souls. I thank all those who have walked with us and answered our calls this day and in days to come, and I honor you. Aho. So stay happy, stay safe, and stay home. Okay? Blessings to each and every one of you. Uh, till next time, bear out and make sure you stop over and watch Ghost Dimensions over on Amazon Prime and on Pluto TV. And I think it's My5 TV. Okay. Y'all stay safe. Much love to everybody. Bye-bye.